Now to that blackout that left tens of thousands of New Yorkers in the dark. Power knocked out for more than 70,000 customers, hundreds stuck in elevators, others stranded on the subway. It was a lot of fun, right? New York's power company announcing that the outage was caused by a backup system failure. The incident has many asking tonight if this is a wake-up call that the America, America's power industry needed, and that's tonight's Spotlight. And joining the conversation tonight is Professor Rajit Gad, director of UCLA's Smart Grid Energy Research Center. We thank you so much for joining us, Professor. Uh, so we just mentioned this preliminary report that shows the faulty relay protection system caused the outage. Does this incident, in fact, for lack of a better term, shine a light on the overall state of the nation's power grid? You know, I think I'm going to back up a little bit and uh, give you some idea about how the power grid was created. Uh, if you go back about a 100 years ago, uh, you know, people were using, you know, kerosene to light up the evening, uh, uh, you know, e evening light. And, 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 and there were tiny grids around, around the country and slowly the, the, the different grids connected together to create this one giant grid we have called the electric power grid in North America that extends from Canada through U.S. into Mexico. Well, this grid is composed of 3,000 separate electric utilities, with each one of them having different technologies, different infrastructures, and some of them were created decades apart. Well, the technologies in some instances are 100 years old, in some instances are 40, 50, 60 years old, and they're different with different standards. And if you look at today, if you had a, a, an Apple computer that is five years old or a, or a smartphone that's five years old, well, mm -hmm. today it would appear ancient. Now think about this grid that spanned 50 years uh, in, 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 the, in the making. And so you have this uh, different technologies and different systems everywhere and all trying to talk to each other and this whole grid is now connected. Well, guess what? The infrastructure is old. Uh, in certain parts, it is quite you know, getting to be ancient. And mm -hmm. I think that given the fact that this technology and the infrastructure is so old is one reason to be concerned and, and therefore uh, you know, outages such as what we had, uh, they, they occur and they, they will continue to occur. Uh, and I think that there's a critical variable that the grid operators define, which is called reliability. Right. Um, certain parts of the world have better reliability than the U.S. And I think we've just got to invest in technology uh, and, 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 and advanced systems to be able to have better monitoring, uh, better control, better visibility, what's happening and the ability to fix Professor. things faster. Professor, so you just referred to parts of the grid as, as ancient, and I think that's pretty eye-opening to a lot of people out there. Uh, so just how susceptible is the grid on the whole to events like these then, or worse? So, uh, you know, this event was contained in about six hours. Um, I think it is impossible to predict the total outage time. And as I was saying, the utilities define something called reliability that gives you an idea as to what the average outage time is going to be. The outage is never going to be zero. It doesn't matter what mm. system you build, but what you lose, you want to make it smaller and smaller. Well, but as the grid becomes older, the outages are just going to, you know, just if we don't modernize the grid, the outages are going to get uh, you know, longer and longer. And but and, and as you mentioned, uh, potentially things can, of course, be, be, be worse. Uh, and I think that this grid also was created at a time when the, we didn't have all these advanced technology. You don't have sensors. You don't have... Uh, solar energy, you don't have battery storage, you don't have uh, smart controls, you don't have communications, uh, you don't have software. So I think that now there's an opportunity to create a completely new grid, which is being called the smart grid, um, you know, which would potentially be able to be a lot more resilient, reliable, and robust. Uh, but that, and, and that also involves things like electric cars, that you could use the battery of the electric right. car to make it uh, reliable and robust. All right, uh, Professor Rajit God, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right.